Hello everyone, I am Karan Agrawal. In CAD 2023, I scored 99.90 percentile. And in this video, I'll be showing you how we approach questions from quant section. If you have noticed previous year score versus percentiles, then you will see that if you get about 12 to 14 questions net correct in quants, then this will surely get you 99 percentile plus in this section. That being said, we only have 40 minutes, right? So how do we get about solving this 12 to 14 question? We do this by prioritizing which questions to solve and which not to solve. So for quants, we solve this section in rounds. In first round, we do the questions which will take less amount of time and which we are confident that we can solve and then leave the lengthy ones and the difficult questions for later rounds. And if we have time remaining after solving round one question, then we revisit those questions. So now I'll just get started with the questions. And uh, when I'm explaining the questions, I will also explain to you how this approach works. Right, so let's begin. So let's start and I've taken this question from CAT 2022 slot 1. So the first question we have is this one. In a village the ratio of number of males to females is 5 is to 4. The ratio of number of literate males to literate females is 2 is to 3. Number of illiterate males to illiterate females is 4 is to 3 and 3600 males are literate then total number of females in the village is. So by reading I see that there is a fairly easy question of ratio and proportion. There are certain males, females, among them there are literate and illiterate people. Ratio of each of them is given. So I can solve this question in the first round itself because it should not take much time. Let's begin male, female, literate, illiterate and uh, ratio of male to female is 5 is to 4, ratio of literate males to literate females is 2 is to 3 and illiterate males to illiterate females is 4 is to 3 so if this is 4y then this is 3y and it is given that 3600 males are literate so 2x is 3600 and if 2x is 3600 then 3x should be 5400 and if I add this I'll get total number of males if I add this I'll get total number of females so you can see that I have a equation ready which I need to solve and I'll get a value of y so let's solve 14400 14 plus 16y 27 plus 15y and this will give me y equals to uh, 12600. Okay, so total number of females is 5400 plus 3y. 5400 plus 3, 12600. This is 5400 plus 37800. And this will come out to be 43200. This is our answer. So you see, this was a fairly easy question. So we should have done this in the first round itself. Let's move on to the next question. Second question is, uh, average weight of students in a class increases by 600 gram. When some new students join the class, if the average weight of the new student is 3 kg more than the average weight of the original students, then the ratio of the number of original students to the new students. Okay, so this is also an easy question of averages. There are certain students in the class whose average weight is let's say A and certain new students join. Let's say their average weight is uh, what A plus 3 and overall the weight of the class increases by 600 grams. So the equation I would get is if there were N students originally and X new students joined. So original and this is new students. So originally there were N students in each of their average weight is A, so total weight of the class is AN. If X new students joined and their average weight is 3 kg more, so their weight will be A plus 3. Now the average of class increases by 600 grams. So how many students are in the class? There were original N and new X, so total N plus X and their weight is A plus 600 grams should be 0.6 kilograms because this 3 is in kilogram so I have to do this also in kilogram and if I solve this I get a n plus a x plus 3 x is equals to okay. 
and this gets cancelled I am left with what 2.4x equals 0.6n this is 1 this is 4 so n by x comes out to be 4 by 1 and this is original upon new and this is what I have to find number of original to number of new students ratio so my answer should be 4 ratio 1 again easy question should be done in the first round itself moving to the next question for any natural number n suppose the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic progression is this if the nth term of the progression is divisible by 9 then the smallest possible value of n is so here I see I have been given a general term of the arithmetic progression and I will have to put some values of n to find the first term, second term and third term. From there I can get a common difference and if I put it in the formula of nth term and make this equals to 9k because it is divisible by 9 then I can get a value of n. So I think I should give it a try in the first round itself i'm not really sure i can solve this but i think the approach is clear in my mind so i will give it a try in the first round if i put n equals to 1 then i get n plus 2n square as 1 plus 2 1 square which will be 3 if i put n equals to 2 then i'll get 2 plus 2 square which will be 10 so first term is 3 sum of first two term is 10 so second term must be 7 and this will give me common difference of 4 just to verify I will ch check n equals to 3 as well it will be 3 plus 2 into 9 21 so some of the first three terms will be 21 so third term will be 11 and it will again give me d equals to 4 so here I have in my arithmetic progression a as 3 and d as 4 now I have a n is divisible by 9 so I can write it in the form of 9 k k will be some natural numbers a n is a plus n minus 1 d is equals to 9 k and a is 3 d is 4 n minus 1 4 will be 9 k this will give me 4 n minus 1 equals to 9 k and n will be 9 k plus 1 by 4 what I need to have to do is find the smallest possible value of n and since n here is a term means n has to be a natural number it cannot be a fractional number or cannot be a negative number it has to be a natural number so 9k plus 1 must be divisible by 4 so now I will just start putting the values of k and see where I get a term which is divisible by 4 if I put k equals to 1 I get 11 not divisible by 4 if I put k equals to 2 I get 19 again not divisible by 4 if I put k equals to 3 I get 28 28 is divisible by 4 so I'll get n as 28 by 4 equals to 7 and I this should be our answer. So this was an easy question if we just had to put values of n and uh, find out a and d and just put in the equation to get the answer. So this could have been done in the first round itself. Next question. Okay this question there are certain conditions given. Just a second certain conditions given then there are mod not just one mod there are three mods so I will not attempt this question the first round itself I will keep it for the later round and move on to the next question next one is this okay trains A and B traveling at the same time towards each other with constant speeds from stations X and Y respectively A reaches Y in 10 minutes while B takes 9 minutes to reach X after meeting A Okay, so this kind of question we have done in time, speed and distance. So we will take it in the first round itself. This is station X, this is station Y. A is moving from here and B is moving from here. Suppose this is where they meet. So it is given that Y takes 10 minutes. A, A to reach Y takes 10 minutes. So total time taken by A is 10 minutes. And B takes 9 minutes after meeting A. So this time for B is 9 minutes. Now let's say they meet in time T. So this time will be T and this time will also be T. Okay. So if you remember the formula that time to meet square is equals to time taken by A after meeting multiplied by time taken by B after meeting. And if we just put the values, t square is uh, t a is what? 10 minus t. And this is 10 minus t, right? Total time is 10, 10 minus t. 
and t b is what 9 minutes so i get a quadratic t square plus 90 minus 90 equals to 0 and this should be i think uh, <clears throat> 15 and 6 should satisfy this t plus 15 t minus 6 equals to 0 so values of t can either be 6 or it can be minus 15 negative time is not possible so value of t will be 6 what is being asked total time taken by b to travel from y to x so t is 6 and this is 9 so total time taken by b is 9 plus 6 equals to 15 minutes this should be our answer so again should we have been done in the round one itself next question a trapezium ABCD has side AD parallel to BC, BAD is 90 degree, BC is 3 and AD is 8, perimeter is given. So I see this is a question of mensuration and one of the angles of the trapezium is 90 degree, two of the sides are given and perimeter is given. I have to find the area. So I will give it a try. I'll draw the diagram and see if I'm able to solve. If I'm not able to solve, I will leave it for the later round. But if I am, then I will solve it. So a trapezium which is right angled and BAD is 90 degree AD is parallel to BC so AD is parallel to BC and BAD is 90 degree and BC is 3 and AD AD is 8 okay and perimeter is 36 I have to find area if I draw a perpendicular then this should also be 3 same as this one 3 and then this will be 8 minus 3 equals to 5 okay 8 minus 3 equals to 5 and if i take this side as a and this also as a then by pythagoras this will become 25 plus a square right so my perimeter will come out to be 3 plus a plus 8 plus under root 25 plus a square so I can see I have an equation, I have a variable and if I solve this, I should be able to get uh, the value of A, 36 minus 11, 25 minus A square equals to 25 plus A square, 625 plus A square minus 50 A, 25 plus A square, this gets cancelled, 50 A comes out to be 600 and this gives me value of a as so what 12 what i have to find area area is what half into sum of parallel sides into height so half into sum of parallel sides is 3 plus 8 11 and height is again a so height is 12 uh, i should not write a plus b here because i have taken a here this is sum of parallel sides okay and this is what 6 66 this should be our answer so easy question should have been done in the round one next one okay this is a question of arithmetic but it's a very long question and if i see here then there are certain cashews peanuts almonds cost of uh, each of them is not given I have to calculate that then I have to mix all of them and sell it for a profit uh, so this is a very lengthy question I'm not sure if I'm I will be able to do this in about one minute or one and a half minute I think this will almost take me three minutes so I will leave it for the later rounds and move on to the next question this is a uh, a largest positive integer that divides numbers of the form 3k, 4k, 5k. B be the largest positive integer that divides all the numbers of the 4k. Okay. So I see general form of the equations have been given to me. I have to put the value of k in each of them and see if I can find some pattern for a and b. So I will give it a try in the first round. If I am able to solve well and good. If not, I will leave it for the later rounds. So I have 3k plus 4k plus 5k. If I put k as 1, I get 3 plus 4 plus 5, 12. If I put k as 2, 9 plus 16 plus 25, it will give me what? Mm, 50. Here I see I get 2 only common, right? Because this is 2 into 3 into 2. This is 2 into what? 5 into 5. I see only 2 is common. So there is no point of going any further because uh, then also I'll get this will be always be odd and this term will also be odd 
and this term will always be even so i will get an even number so an even number will be of the form 2k so 2 will be there so i see only 2 is common in this expression so i can say that value of a will be 2 okay and if i take this expression 4k plus 3 4k plus 4k plus 2 this is what 4 into 4k uh, 4k plus 2 this will become 4k plus 1 plus 4k plus 2 if i take 4k plus 1 common this will become 1 plus uh, what 4 and this will become 5 into 4k plus 1 okay so this are simplified nicely i can see that 5 will always be common 4 will always be there and 4k will be there so i have to start what uh, k is any positive integer so k cannot be 0 k has to start from 1 so I will always have 5 I will always have 4 and I will always have at least 1 4 from this 4k and uh, then if it depends on the values of k if k is 2 then another 4 if k is 3 then 4 squares but I will always have this this is what 80 I will always have 80 so b should be equal to 80 I have b I have a sum of a plus b should be 82 and that should be my answer so could have been done in the round one and if uh, you are comfortable with algebra then it was definitely a round one question next question a b c just uh, a second again hmm. a b c non-zero real number such that b square is less than 4 ac when I see b square is less than 4 ac then the first thing that comes to my mind is determinant is less than 0 if determinant is less than 0 means no real roots of the equation exist and if no real roots exist then the graph of the equation must be like this or like this and if coefficient of x square which is a is less than 0 then it will be this case and if it is a is greater than 0 then it will be this case okay when I see this this is the only thing that comes to mind and fx is this if the set s consists of all integers m such that fm is less than 0 fm is less than 0 means this case graph is always less than 0 then s must necessarily be so okay i have two cases if a is less than 0 then graph is always negative it does not matter whatever is the value of m it will always be negative so s should contain all integers okay and if i take second case a is greater than 0 then graph will be like this fm will never be negative so it's not possible means it will be an empty set s will be an empty set so if it is this case all integers satisfy if this is this case then none of the integers satisfy and option this either the empty set or the set of all integers this is correct option and uh, yes this could have been done in the round one itself next question the number of ways of distributing 20 identical balloons among four children such that each child gets some balloon but no child gets an odd number of balloons is okay so if you have done uh, i think algebra and also permutations and combination then you must have read this that if there are n identical things and it has to be distributed among r different people such that everyone get at least one it is given by n minus 1 c r minus 1 here also we have that uh, each one gets some balloons so we will use this formula n minus 1 c r minus 1 but there is an additional condition here that uh, no child gets an odd number of balloons so if there are four childs are a b c and d then each of them must get 2k balloons let me take that he gets 2a balloons he gets 2b balloons he gets 2c balloons and he gets 2d balloons and total balloons are what 20 so if I add this all total balloons must be 20 and if I simplify this it becomes a plus c plus d is equals to 10. So what we are left with that uh, n identical things are different people here n is equals to 10 and r equals to 4. If I apply it in this formula I get 9c3 and 9c3 equals to uh, 2, 4, 3 and this comes out to be what 84 this should be my answer answer should be 84 could have been done in the first round itself next question a and b be natural numbers if a square plus a b plus a equals to 14 and b square plus a b equals to 28 then 2a plus b equals what 
I have read this type of question. I know how to solve this type of question. Here, I get two factors because A and B are natural numbers. I get two factors, and from that, I have to take cases and see which one satisfies the other equation. Okay, so I'll I personally would have attempted this in the first round itself because it goes like A square plus A B plus A equals to fourteen. If I take A common, it gets A plus B plus one equals to fourteen. and since a and b are natural numbers means this can be least possible value can be 1 and here also least possible value can be 1 and 1 so least possible value of a plus b plus 1 can be 3 means it has to be greater than or equal to 3 and it has to be greater than or equal to 1 so what are the factors of 14 factors of 14 are 1 into 14 14 into uh, and 2 into 7 so i can take either a as 14 and a plus b plus 1 as Sorry, a is one and a plus b plus one is fourteen or fourteen and one. I can take a is two, a plus b plus one is seven or seven into two. Okay, this all will satisfy the equation, but there is a condition that a plus b plus one should be greater than equal to three. Means this is wrong and this is wrong. So now I am left with that a, a plus b plus one, is what one two fourteen seven, and this will give me what value of b? It will give me fourteen minus two ah uh, twelve. And this will give me seven minus three four. Now, if you see, I have another equation: b square plus a b plus b equals to twenty eight. B common b plus a plus one twenty eight. Okay, so this values should satisfy this equation. Then only they are true. So I get b into a plus b plus one definitely not twenty eight. So this case is wrong. B into a plus b plus one. This will be twenty eight. So this question, this case is right. And the value of two a plus b should be two, two plus four. This two and this four, and this will come out to be what eight. So eight should be my answer. Okay. Next question. Uh, it is similar to the question we left that arithmetic question, which was very long, and this also seems similar. Uh, arithmetic question which is long, and I do not want to attempt this in the first round. I will keep it for the later and move on to the next question. Okay, this is uh, all the vertices of the rectangle lie on a circle of radius r. If the perimeter of the rectangle is p, then the area of the rectangle is. So I am not exactly sure if I may I will be able to solve this question, but this is a geometric question, so I will at least draw the diagram and see if I can get something from that. There is a circle and a rectangle with all four sides on the circle. And uh, there's a and we know that diagonal is the diameter. Diagonal of a rectangle inside the circle is the diameter. So this should be two r. And perimeter is p. Perimeter is p. So I'll take this as a. So this will be a. I'll take this as b. So this will also be b. So perimeter will become two a plus b. And also this is ninety because it's a rectangle. So I can see that four r square is equals to a square plus b square by Pythagoras theorem. And I have to find area of the rectangle. Area of the rectangle will be AB. Now, if you notice the options, area is in terms of perimeter and radius. So I have to find area in terms of perimeter and radius. And P square is common in every option, so it gives me a hint that P will be squared. So I'll just square perimeter first. I'll get four A square plus B square plus two AB. Now, if you notice that this question has just become very simple because a square plus b square is four r square. I'll write it as four r square, and a b is area itself, so two a p. I'll take two common. I'll get eight two r square plus a, and this eight I'll put here p by eight two r square also goes there minus two r square area. This is my answer. P by P square by eight, sorry. P square by eight minus two r square b should have been done in the first round. Next question: The average of three integers is thirteen. When a natural number n is included, the average becomes an odd integer. Minimum possible value of n. Ah, uh, seems to me an easy question of algebra, so I'll attempt this in the first round. Uh, if average of three integers is thirteen, means a plus b plus c by three is thirteen, then sum of a plus b plus c comes out to be thirty-nine. Now another integer n is added, natural number n is added, so average becomes what? An odd integer. 
a plus b plus c by 4 is an odd integer a plus b plus c is also already 39 39 plus n plus 4 is an odd integer and i have to find the minimum possible value of n and n is n is a natural number so i'll just start checking n from 1 2 2 3 and so on and where i'll get a value which will give me an odd number that will be my answer so if i put n equals to 1 i get 40 by 4 10 not odd if i put n equals to 2 i get 39 plus 2 41 which is not divisible by 4 if i put n equals to 3 42 not divisible by 4 n equals to 4 43 not divisible by 4 n equals to 5 this will give me what 44 which is divisible by 4 and it gives me an odd number so my answer should be n equals to 5 option c next question a uh, mixture contains lemon juice and sugar syrup in equal proportion if a new mixture is created by adding this mixture and sugar syrup in the ratio 1 is to 3 then the ratio of lemon juice and sugar syrup in the new mixture is okay uh, easy question of mixture and allegation i will do it in the first round there is lemon and there is sugar syrup and uh, equal proportion so let me take this is 50 and this is 50 and total volume is 100 okay a new mixture is created by adding mixture and syrup in the ratio 1 is to 3 so if this is 1 uh, then this is 300 this is 3 right 1 is to 3 so if this is 100 this should be 300 and it is just sugar so all 300 is sugar syrup and if both are mixed then i get total volume as 400 sugar as 350 and lemon as 50 i have to find the ratio of lemon juice and syrup in the new mixture this is the ratio this is 1 is to 7 my answer should be 1 is to 7 easy one next question the largest real value of a for which the equation this has an infinite number of solutions of x is okay <clears throat> when i read that i need infinite number of solutions for x then this tells me that the equation needs to be independent of x because if it is independent of x then no matter what the value of x is it will always have a solution and thus infinite number of solutions so i need to make this equation independent of x now i see that uh, there are two mod functions here i can open them with either positive sign or negative sign taking the case but here x and x are of same sign so if I need to eliminate x from this equation, I should open this as positive and this as negative or this as negative and this as positive. Then only I will be able to eliminate x, right? So let's just make two cases quickly and do this. I open the first bracket as positive and um, second one negative. I get x plus a minus x plus 1 equals to 2 x gets eliminated i get a equals to what 1 okay i take second case i take first bracket as negative and second as positive 2 minus x minus a plus x minus 1 2 plus x minus x gets cancelled this gives me what a as minus 3 what is being asked largest real value of a so which is the larger one one is larger one so one should be the answer okay next question in a class of 100 students 73 like coffee 80 like tea 52 like lemonade it may be possible that some students do not like any of these three drinks then the difference between the maximum and minimum possible number of students who like all the three drinks is okay so this is the question from chocolate problem if you have done set theory and if you have read chocolate problem then this is a fairly easy question and should be done in the round one itself coffee 73 like tea 80 like and lemonade is like by 52 total number of drinks i have is what mm, 205 and if i show you with a venn diagram then this is coffee 73 tea 80 and t 50 and lemonade sorry lemonade 52 okay i have to find difference between the maximum and minimum possible number of students who like all the three drinks and it is maybe possible that some students do not like any of the three drinks means it is possible that this value is zero okay so first i'll find maximum how i will find maximum if you notice that this circle is of lemonade and lemonade is 52 only so maximum possible value in this circle can be 52 which i will put here itself because i have to find the maximum number 
here I'll put 0, here I'll put 3, here I'll put 0 and whatever is remaining of 80 minus 52 I'll adjust somewhere and 73 minus 52 I'll adjust somewhere so maximum value I'll get is 52 it is not possible to get a value more than 52 okay now about minimum so here comes the concept of chocolate problem if I have to minimize number of students having three drinks then I will have to maximize the number of students having two drinks so how I'll do that there are 100 students I will give two drinks to each student I will use up 200 drinks and now I am left with only five drinks now I have no choice but to give this five drinks to any five students because everyone has two drinks now I have to give one to each of the five kids now they will have three drinks so minimum value is five it is not possible to have five kids less than five kids who have three drinks so difference between them is what 47 this should be my answer okay if you know chocolate problem then this is a fairly easy question next question or uh, next question we have is um, okay so the next question we have is this one a b c d of parallelogram three vertices are given after find the four vertex so this is a very easy question and should have been attempted by everyone in the first round itself this is a par parallelogram a is one one b is uh, three four c is minus two comma eight and d is what x comma y we know that diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other so if this point is o then o is midpoint of bd and o is also the midpoint of ac so if o is the midpoint of ac then o should be what 1 minus 2 by 2 comma 8 plus 1 by 2 and it should also be x plus 3 by 2 comma y plus 4 by 2 okay here I get uh, minus 0 0.5 comma 4.5 and uh, if I equate this with uh, other one I get minus 0 0.5 is x plus 3 by 2 this will give me x as what minus 4 minus 1 minus 4, 4 yes and uh, 4.5 with y plus 4 by 2 this will give me y as 5 so the coordinates of d are what minus 4 comma 5 and this should be my answer easy one next question we have for natural numbers x y and z if x y plus y z is 19 and y z plus x z is 51 then the minimum possible value of x y and z is okay this is very similar to the question we did of a square plus a b plus b here also if i take y common just y common and it i will get x plus z equals to 19 here if i take z common here i'll get x plus y equals to 51 and 19 is what 1 into 19 or 19 into 1 but y x and z are natural numbers so x plus z should be greater than or equal to 2 so this case is not possible so i have y as 1 and x plus z as 19 okay here i'll get what 1 into 51 51 into 1 or uh, it is what 17 into 3 i think yes and 3 into 17 so this case is not possible because x plus y should be greater than or equal to 2 and uh, so these are the possible cases of z and x plus y if z uh, okay i'll consider all these cases 117 as 3 if z is 1 then it will give me what x as 18 if z equals to 17 it will give me x equals to 2 from here x plus z right and if z equals to 3 it will give me x equals to 16 now i also have value of x plus y it should be in sync with the values uh, over here so 18 plus 1 x plus y 18 plus 1 will give me 19 2 plus 1 will give me 3 and 16 plus 1 will give me 17 here this to check out because here for z equals to 1 x plus y is 51 but here we get 19 so this is a wrong case here for 17 it is 3 correct for 3 it is 17 correct I have to find the minimum possible value of x, y, z. So the minimum possible value of x, y, z, 17 into 2 into y is what? y is 1. 
So 17 into 2, I'll get 34 here and I'll get here 48. Minimum is 34. So my answer should be 34. Okay. Next question. Alex is interested in... Alex invested his saving in two parts. Simple interest earned on the first part at 15% per annum for four years. Same as the simple interest earned on the second part at 12% per annum for three years. Okay, a very easy question of interest, simple interest. If I take first part as A and second part as B, then uh, and I apply the formula of simple interest, then P R T T what was T T was four years. P R T by hundred should be equal to P R T by hundred. Okay, it's cancelled three five one three. I get what A by B equals three by five. What is being asked? The percentage of his savings in the first part is. So total is A plus B which is 8 and A is 3. So his percentage is 3 by 8. 3 by 8 which is what? 37.5%. Uh, this is my answer. Do I have? Yes. Correct. Should have been done in the first round. Next, Pinky is standing in a queue at a ticket counter. Suppose the ratio of a number of persons standing behind of pinky to a number of persons standing ahead of pinky to behind is 3 to 5 okay so there's a queue here is pinky and the person ahead of her are 3x and person behind her are 5x so total number of people is 8x plus 1 okay and uh, total number of persons in the queue is less than 300 this is less than 300 then the maximum possible number of persons standing ahead of pinky is I have to find maximum of 3x I have to find maximum of x I get ax is less than 200 and what 99 x is less than 299 by 8 now this 3x denotes the number of people so this x has to be a natural number because people cannot be in fraction or negative so I have to find the integer which will satisfy this so I'll get this x as 200 by it is what? Mm, I think 7 point something. I'm not concerned with decimal but I only need natural number so I'll get x as 37. I have to find maximum so 3x should be 3 into 37. This will give me 111. This should be my answer. Easy one. Next question. Okay, greatest integer function. Uh, looks a bit complex I would probably not do this in the first round and keep it for the later rounds but I see I have done with I'm done with all the questions so I can now go for round two and in round two the questions left are this one this one a lengthy one this one again lengthy one and uh, last one this one so among this this one I think I'll attempt first so let's see if we can solve this question this uh, just a second hmm. what i have here is this conditions and uh, this if i have to remove this mod bracket then i need to know if a is less than x or a is greater than x fortunately i have been given that a is less than equal to x so i can remove this bracket and uh, this will be x minus a here I have x minus 100 and x is always less than equal to 100. So when I remove this mod bracket, then I will have to put a negative sign because 100 is greater than x. And I have no information about if x is greater than a plus 50 or x is less than a plus 50. So I cannot remove this sign as of now. So I'll write it as it is. Upon solving this, I get uh, 100 minus a plus mod of x minus a minus 50 now one way to solve this will be by graph of uh, drawing a graph of mod function this will be a plus 50 and but i'm not very comfortable with the graph so what i'll do is i'll use the options okay if i take first option 25 and i put it in this what i get i get 75 plus x minus 75 okay now i need to find the maximum value of fx should be 100 okay so uh, what i'll do is i'll 
find out the upper limit of x and lower limit of x and check if I am getting a value greater than 100 somewhere. x is always greater than equal to and less than equal to 100. So here x should be between 100 and a which is 25. So if I put x is 25 over here, I will get what 75 plus 50 and which is greater than 100. So this is not possible. This is not my option. If I take B and put A as 100, so my X would be between this and this. So X means, this means X is equal to 100 and A is also 100. So I'll put it here, 100 minus 100, it will give me 0 plus 100 minus 50. Uh, it will give me 50, 50 only. This is the only value which is possible of fx, but maximum value should be 100. So this is again not my option. Okay, uh, I'll just remove this. I check option C, 50. So x will be between 100 and 50. I will put uh, lower limit 50 first. I get 100 minus 50, 50 plus x minus 50 minus 50, 0 minus 50. So this will become 100. Okay, I'm getting maximum value 100. But I'll also check upper limit. If I put x as 100, so I will get what? 50 plus 100 minus 100, 0. It will give me 50. Okay, so the maximum value I'm getting is 100 only. So this seems like my option. But I'll check D also just for safety. D, 0. So x should be between 100 and 0. If I put in this equation A as 0, I get 100 plus x minus 50 and you can see if I put x equals to 0 I'll get 150 which is more than 100 so this is again not my option C is the correct option so this should be the answer so you can see how options also help us in solving the questions just moving to the next question again I am not interested in solving this question right now I will take up this question because next one is greatest integer one so I will take first take this question because I know how to solve arithmetic questions and I'm comfortable with them. So what I have is syrup. 410 kilograms. I have juice. I have 120 kilograms. Syrup is 20% less costly than juice. So if juice is of 10x per kilogram, syrup is of 8x per kilogram. Okay. He sells 10 kilograms of syrup at 10% profit. So he sells 10 kilograms at 10% profit means 8.8 and he sells 20 kg of juice at 20% profit so 20 kg and 20% profit on 10x will be 12x this is what he sells at so this is 80x 88x and 240x 328x okay then he mixes the remaining juice and syrup and sells the mixture at 308.32 so here I have used 10 kg so I am left with 100 kg. Here I have used 20 kg so I am left with 100 kg again. So rest 200 kg is being sold at 308.32. This is my selling price. And makes an overall profit of 64%. So profit of 64% on cost price. What is my cost price? My cost price is 880x, 1200x. This is what 2080x and 64% profit means 1.64. I have to solve this equation, get, get the value of x, and then uh, what cost price for syrup in rupees per kg. So I have to find 8x. So let's just quickly solve this. You can, this seems like a complex calculation, so you can use the on screen calculator which is available. And uh, what I'll get is. This will be 3411.2x, 328x, plus uh, 232.616.64, and minus 328, this will give me 383.2x, 61.664, and x will come out to be 20.
So 8x will come out to be what 160 and this should be my answer. So a question which is easy to do but a lengthy question. Next question which will I'll take up is uh, I'm left with what this one a lengthy one I don't like uh, and this one. So I'll first start with this one. I have a greatest integer function 1 by 5 plus n by 25 and this is what 0 0.2 plus 0 0.04 n. Okay, so if you know greatest integer function, then if I have something like 0 0.9, then this will be equal to 0. If I have 0 0.9999, then also it will be 0. As long as the value inside the function is less than 1, it will give me 0. And if it is like 1.7, then it will give me 1. If it is 1.9, it will give me again 1. So you understand how greatest integer works, right? So if I have to get this value as 1, because I have to get some 25, right? Then I need to have this in the value inside the function equals to one. Then only I can get uh, a one a value as one of this equation. So what will be the n? N will be 0 0.8 upon 0 0.04, which will be what 20. So for all the values of n from 1 to 19, the value of this greatest integer function will be zero, which is of no use for me because I need 25 here. How I'll get 25? I'll get 25 by ones. So from 20 till what will the function be 1? For that I need to check when will this function become 2. This will become 2 at uh, mm, right 45. So from 20 till 44 function will become 1 and at 45 to whatever function will become 2. Now let me see if I'm able to form 25. From 20 to 44 I have how many numbers? I have exactly 25 numbers. So I'll get exactly 25 ones and adding all them will give me 25. Right, so I don't need n equal to 45. And till n equals to 44 if I get then I'll get the value 25 and that is being asked I think then n is. So n should be what? 44. This should be my answer. Okay. I hope you got that. The last question which I am left with is this one. So let's start. Cashews. Cashews are 4 kg. Peanuts are 14 kg. And almonds are what? 6 kg almonds. Now I have 7 kg cashews cost same as 30 kg peanuts cost and 9 kg almonds cost. So if I take C, P and A as cost of each kilogram of, of each of these nuts respectively then I get 7 C is equals to 30 P equals to 9 A. And when you have uh, some like this we know how to get value of C, P and A. I take LCM of 730 and 9 this will come out to be what 630 so it will give me C as 630 by 7 equals to 90 similarly P will be 21 and A will be 70 so cost of each kilogram of cashews is 90x of peanuts is 21x and of almonds is 70x okay this calculation is of no use now hmm now what do we have next we have she mixes all three nuts and marks the price for the mixture in order to make a profit of 1752 so if she mixes all she get what 24 kg and so for 24 kg selling price is cost price plus profit so what is the cost price i have to find cost price first nine 360x, 294x, 420x. This comes out to be 1074x. So we have a profit of 1752. So selling price will be 1074x plus 1752. And this is for 24 kgs, right? So if I take selling price of 1 kg as uh, a so this will be for 24 kilograms equals to 24a okay 
Now next statement is 4 kg of the mixture at this marked price. She sells 4 kg of the mixture at this marked price and the remaining at 20% discount on marked price. So 4 kg is sold at A only and rest 20 kg is sold at 20% discount which will be 0.8A. So this comes out to be what? 16A plus 4A, 20A. So she sold at 20A and make a profit of 744. So cost price plus profit will be equal to the selling price which is 20a 20a now i get two equations i get 4a equals to 1008 and this will get cancelled so a will come out to be 252 what i have to find in this i have to find the amount in rupees that she spent in buying almonds which is 420x so i need value of x so i'll put a in any of these equations if i put a in this equation i'll get 1074x is equals to 24 into 252 minus 1752 so what will i get i will get uh, This solving this will give me x equals to 4. So now 420x will be 420 into 4 equals to 1680. This should be my answer. 1680. So now we are done with all the questions and uh, you see how we approach the questions, right? First I did the questions which uh, I knew how to approach just upon reading the question and i knew this would not take much of my time the questions which were either lengthy or which i was not very sure how to approach i left them for the later rounds and once i was done with round one questions i revisited the questions which i left and among them also i picked the questions which i thought would take less time and i kept the lengthy questions for later rounds if you remember i first did that modulus function question then greatest integer one then i did that lemon and sugar question and then at last i picked this question because i knew this would take time so this is how we prioritize uh, which questions to solve first and which to solve later. I hope this video was helpful guys and that's all from my side. Thank you so much for watching the video.